Okay. Uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, Reva University, Shinu, and my mentor, uh, uh, Mithun, uh, for actually supporting me and also for giving me this opportunity to present my, uh, yeah, and also who's going to assist my project, <laughs> Robert, sir, <laughs> and bearing with me for the next 15 minutes to uh, hear me across my presentation, whatever I've done. Thank you so much. And also my friends who have come all over only for the presentation and supporting us. Thank you. So uh, this uh, presentation is basically on attrition and uh, the employee attrition analysis and uh, just a disclaimer saying that, you know, this project is uh, purely on uh, academic purpose. And I have only limited data set with around uh, 366 observations that I have. Uh, so coming to attrition, attrition again is the most uh, happening topic and evergreen topic in uh, across the industry and across all the business lines. And uh, attrition is always an ongoing issue and every company wants to know why employees are leaving, okay? Uh, basically, they, uh, they do not want to jump into any conclusion as to why the employees are leaving, but instead they would like to have a deep down analysis as to uh, what are the uh, causes of attrition and also the types of attrition that they can go about. So what I, uh, I did, uh, you know, readings all over and I found few interesting things like the types of attrition can be uh, bad attrition, good attrition and market driven. So here I say good attrition where uh, the less productive people, employees leave the organization and also bad attrition for the uh, companies where the high performers leave the organization. And also there is, there is something called market driven. Market driven is where there are, there can be a layoff or a competitor can come over and take us. So these are the types of attrition that we could also, uh, you know, come across with this kind of uh, uh, things as well. And uh, so basically my uh, company is a previous company, uh, the data set which I had. So based on that only I worked on it. And I have around the, the overall observation is around 366 where 299 with the active headcount and 64 with the attritions that actually quit us. And uh, uh, the company which I was earlier working is a product development company. They have a lot of uh, mergers and acquisitions. And after that, we came up to one particular company. And it is first set up in India and in Bangalore. So this was the first setup which we moved from the Home completely home devices. From the mobile devices, we completely moved into home devices. So it's a complete product-based company. So the business understanding what here was the main objective of this case study is to retain the employees in the organization. And also, why? Because in 2016, the year run attrition was 21%. So until I was there, this was the attrition number that was there. And my analytics objective was to reduce the attrition and also how to control the employees turn through productive models which can be used for developing retention strategy. So this is my objective. Uh, after this class is what my objective started with this. So earlier we used to talk only about, um, okay, sorry. I would like to go about with this as well. The approaches to business more problem. So we what we you earlier used to do is identify the attrition employees in their tenure and also the high performers or low performers and reasons contributing and departments facing the maximum uh, attrition. So this was the earlier when, uh, when I was there and taking up the data, we used to categorize in these blocks. So this is what my business problem approach was there. Later on, I will tell you how I, it got changed. So uh, after having those data sets, from the data, whatever I have, I have categorized into the collection data, the described data, and the explore data, and the verify and data quality. So these were the data methods that I used for the project that I, I actually categorized into demographics, tenure, and the various levels. I categorized the uh, entire attrition. Then the age, marital status, gender, overall experience. Active employees plus uh, quit. 363. 363 were the total observation. In that 299 were 
uh, active headcount and 64 were resigned. So I combined both to actually check out which is the best. And uh, because in my uh, attrition data, I used to never have the marital status or the demographic complete data. So I used to have only the, as I, as I told you, the previous, uh, we used to have only this, the tenure and the high performing ratings. Only these two data were present. But later, what I did was I also include the marital status and their education. So to find some, if there is any correlation or if there is any significance uh, interest in the attrition. So, uh, and also I bucketed the tenure and so that it can convert into a meaningful data. And the attrition where, that is where I mentioned as yes or no, the attrition were converted. So based on my, This too was from our survey. This too. Yes, we have the individual data. Yes. So based on my current data, these are the analysis that I uh, brought into, wherein we have separate. I got the separated data for the year sixty-four numbers and the existing weathers. So the tenure-wise split, I can see that the uh, three to five years plus five to ten years took the most uh, out of it. But uh, the 36% and 33% were out of the chunk of 64. And coming to this, uh, this, uh, this is my business, wherein CPEP contributes most of my headcount. In that to, uh, 299, 66% is more for us. Because they are uh, uh, software engineers, uh, senior software engineers, all those things. And this is a this is completely a support staff, and this is a non-support staff, completely engineering based. Then we have level a level wise split attrition, wherein level two and level three contributed more for me. The attrition numbers. Yes, it goes like this. Highest is level five for us. Level one is low. Level five we have only one director. The attrition, the attrition. Attrition. 18, yes. This is CPEP. This is functional split. This functional split where CPEP contributes the more for me under the level. So the level wise, even we have lot in CPEP. There's a business line for us wherein it contributes the highest level two and level three. This is a headcount split for the talent lost. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, the headcount is also higher for us. And your stacking follows the same ratio. Like yellow, green, huh. Yes. Yeah, because I don't want to. Uh, this is a level wise attrition split. Pattern, okay. Yes. So this is the uh, level wise split. I also uh, compared with the performance ratings that we have. That I find slightly distracting because the talent lost and was huh? Whereas the chart is actually about your headcount. No, this is completely about the headcount loss. This also is a headcount loss. Huh, 64. 66% uh, contributes for uh, the CPEP business. Tenure-wise split I wanted to show. The tenure-wise. We also have a tenure-wise. We have... Uh, we yeah. all... By itself, we either have a level wise we have a level wise effect, level wise and function wise. But somewhere the, the overall when you walk through the table, it captures when you're looking at the So the same, what is the takeaway from this to be that this is my employee demographic distribution, this is my distribution in terms of headcount cost, and this is my thing. Same way the department wise distribution in terms of even if this slide is based on levels also, it's okay. okay. What is 
a level based institution. So tenure by itself is not a self it is not leading, it is a narrative. This is the data point that goes to a position. So what I my basic thought was like uh, the tenure, the more you stay in the company, or the uh, we get to be more along itself. But your three to five years, five to ten years, even though the employees are staying more, they're not able to, uh, means they are just quitting because of X, Y, Z reasons. So that is where my uh, thought was. I, I am in a different, okay. Opposite. So I also uh, uh, identified the top performing uh, attrition at risk as well. But here the ratings are from three to 4.5. We don't have any five scalar. So th these are the numbers. These are not the percentage. So 20, uh, 3.5. People who quit. I'm completely talking about the people who quit. Yeah. Maybe the wordings are wrong. Maybe I've written, but this is. Attrition. Huh. Risk. So this 3.5. Even though, uh, okay. You don't know what the person is going to do. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Maybe I I have to remove. Where? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> that is where I want. Uh, okay. And so this is performance from the people who quit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Completely, who have. And we see that you know 3.5 ratings are the major zones who quit us for that particular year. Yes, we also have five, but five nobody for uh, falls in the lowest rating is three. Lowest rating is three. Actually, three is one. Oh yes. Basically, three is one. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> but why this? No, five is not there for us. No, it's there, but no, no, none of the employees were. For. It starts from three, three. Ratings is always uh, uh, expectations met, expectations exceed accept, uh, expectations. and uh, So uh, my people, most of them fall under this category. We do not uh, make them to five fall because we are also have certain uh, criteria if the manager wants them to fall under five. They have to give us proper justification why he, he or she is given the employee five. And five is, you know, uh, we have to give them all uh, bulk. So we do not uh, recommend five. I don't know why this is. <laughs> no, there's actually only one. Side. I don't know why. I don't know why it is coming like that. Okay. Sir, please ignore this, sir. Okay. And the reasons for contributing for attrition. So based on the attrition details, what I have, we have segregated into personal reasons, better salary, return to school and career prospects. So these are the uh, five major categories that we actually schedule, uh, put across all the 64 categorized. Wherein we can see that your know, career prospects 28% and better salary 42%. So we have the major competitors as well. But we feel that we do not have competitors in our company, but we have the major competitors like Ariba Networks are major competitors for us and Cisco. So, uh, and they get around 70% hike for us. Even though we have our own benchmark, we are in par with the uh, uh, standards, market standards, but still the competitors are uh, you know, taking our employees with 42% per, 42 contribute for this. And uh, so this is my interferences from the 64 uh, data, uh, data sets. Now coming back to the data preparation and cleaning, where I started converting the matrix into categorical of this uh, categorical data from some of the demographic questions like age, year of service, everything I categorized into numeric so that I can get some interferences. And I also use the data cleaning to see if there are any outliers. Age is, uh, no, a range, all buckets, I categorized into buckets. Then after that, I uh, did some kind of outliers, I cleaned, but there was no any outliers. If I, if I eliminate outliers, then my data is gone. And also, uh, then I segregated into attrition and not attrition. 
So here, this is what my independent variable are. So gender, marital status, these are my independent variable which are contributing to my dependent variable attrition. So all these are my uh, data that I had. Yes, yes, because I I prepared the data and all the data sets I would need when I was working in my company. So coming to the exploring data set, there was no missing data because everything was there intact. And based on this, at outset, logistic regression model included demographic variables and I eliminated the insignificant variables. I want to highlight over here, uh, wherein, uh, as I said, Earlier, I never used to include marital status and education. So what happened when I excluded that, I didn't have any significance or uh, relation between the variables that I had currently with the attrition. So what I thought, uh, because I had in my headcount, I in included that particular two, two variables and this particular uh, logistic reg regression gave me a significance value for four variables. So that is where I will come to the next slide and I will explain as well as to how do I got the correlate. Uh, I did the cross tab and the chi square test for those four uh, variables only. And also I checked, I put the blocks plot for the, uh, to check if there are any outliers within that four variables. Rather than taking 11 variables, uh, which are not uh, uh, significant, I took only four variables which are significant to my attrition. Not. Okay, it is contradictory. Okay. Okay. Then lost. I have to put it. Yeah, I will be uh, taking through, uh, but uh, after this exploring data, I want to uh, I want to make an assumption. Yeah. Sure, I will. I'll put everything into percentage. Sure. So I would like to make an assumption over here based on the tenure, uh, whether the tenure is really going to matter a lot or no. Uh, so your uh, again, it is all numbers. Sorry about it. it. Is not percentage. And here, there's a comparison of 15 and 16 that I have done. It I've taken an assumption. I'm just making an assumption. So, so if you see, there are two. Uh, Yes, yes, five to 10 years experience. And in uh, Jan 2015, there was no uh, person quit at all. So I made a comparison of years. It's Feb uh, 16, two, two years back to back. I'm just comparing uh, both under, what, under which uh, tenure they fall under. Okay, and from this, Actually, I wanted to show in a trend line. So that trend line, I was not able to get it properly in this. Uh, if not, the trend line would have really very easy for us to even uh, show. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I was not able to get this tenure in that. Uh, so uh, I made a little bit of uh, different. So here, um, August 2016, 
and June 2016 were the maximum at writers of three to five years and five to ten years. So here, what was a major cause was because the uh, salary reason. They quit because because of the salary for us, and also it is during the performance appraisal time for us. Uh, that is the reason we see the major uh, quits between that time as well. And also August. So we don't have much attrition in our company. Yes. That is how. <laughs> yes, performance appraisal cycle is uh, Jan to December. That is a year for us, and we give in the April or June is what we give the uh, hike. But okay, I'll tell you the reason why we have this 2015 scalers because of mergers and acquisitions that were taking place in my organization. People were not very comfortable staying in the organization because there were a lot of uh, layoffs which were happening. Uh, my company is none, none other than Motorola, and now it is uh, Aris. So the data points are based on Aris, not Motorola. So all these are uh, my people are very very old employees who are staying in uh, Motorola for many years. Almost 25 years is like is what my trend is. Motorola, yes. Home, home is like uh, devices, uh, all those set-up boxes and all. Division is taken by uh, Aris. Aris. Sorry, no, Aris, Aris India, uh, which is a UK-based company. It is only present only in Bangalore for us. Nowhere else. So, uh, so linking back to my uh, uh, significant values. These are my significant values that I have correlated with the attrition, independent variable and dependent variable. The, yes, based on the uh, cross tab chi square, based on that, I came out with this uh, all these things. This is what is actually correlating with this. But uh, earlier, uh, before this uh, attending program, earlier what I have used to happen is we used to take performance, we used to take uh, the tenure. Tenure is over here, but performance was a major factor for us to actually see whether they're going to act right or no earlier. But after doing all this reg uh, regression and all those things, significance, which is more significant, this is where I I could correlate the significance of attrition rather than performance. Not not logistic regression, uh, significance value. Most significant variables through chi square correlation. So that is where I could find out only okay, these are the important variables that are leading to attrition. Yes, sir. So what oh, your education over here is uh, we have only one person who have done PhD in my in that particular organization. Plus, we also give extra trainings to them. Like we have this cloud training, cloud-based training from Bitsbalani. So all these things contribute for them. So over here, while we give the educational training to them as well, we we do not have any bond, bond signed with them. So what happens? They gain all the knowledge and they attract. So this also is one of the challenges for us. So this based on my uh, uh, understanding. This, this includes uh, the engineering graduates, that also is there.
for model base because I don't want to give all the 11 variables that is that was earlier contributing and come out with a no but choose the best out of it and then come out then I give a proper uh, feedback or suggestion to my uh, com company or people whomsoever is it rather than going back to the Uh, yes, too many variables. That okay. Much okay. 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 But yeah, I can give a little more thought about it. Sure, sure. I will do that. Sure. So uh, I don't know if the next slide will be. Uh, uh, this is the outlines that I wanted to do for those uh, four uh, variables. And uh, the education is where the PhD that I was talking about that it doesn't fall under the outlines. But I didn't want to eliminate him because he has to be in the system for us. He's one of the good resources. So that is where I wanted to get this as well. It is just uh, for the outlines that I checked to tell that I have done something. <laughs> okay. <Sure>. Okay. <laughs> okay. And this is the approach to build the model. Uh, this is the cross tab with chi square. This is where I, I did that for the significance. And this is where the model selection, where the decision tree and the logistic regression that I've used for the model building. Huh. No. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And the uh, decision tree. So the next uh, is where the decision tree that I built on. Uh, these are the four independent variables. The results what uh, came out of it was marital status and tenure. So the next slide I will explain it. So this is where the profile analysis came through, arthritis and non-arthritis, where if the mar marital status is equal to unmarried and the tenure is less than uh, four years, then 70% will arthrite. So these are the arthrite numbers for me. If, okay. So, yeah, yeah, across levels, across levels. So this is where my decision tree comes up. Uh, if the marital status and also unmarried is equal to unmarried and the tenure is less than four years, there are more chances that they can outright. But <laughs> I can't do that, so they throw me out. <laughs> status is a, playing a major role where they quit. They quit. They quit. Because once I get married, because of my husband, I have to leave the place and go or travel somewhere. So most of the arthritis is because of the uh, means female employees are right because of that. Yeah, larger issues are in life. <laughs> larger issues in life. <laughs> I've still not experienced it, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. And uh, none of these. 
<laughs> no, it was because of my manager. Okay, so do not add right. So this is uh, what I have done, and the last one is where uh, the decision tree model, what it predicted me, and the logistic regression. I uh, I also interfered where. 95% I feel the logic regression uh, model is best for me to use rather than the decision tree because it is giving me the accuracy of 95%. So uh, I don't know how to, um, because based on the, Yes. That is okay. But so go back to your object regret. You are actually focused on capturing at rate. Yes. So you should be actually looking at uh, which one is able to capture at rate. Okay. So if you do 64 uh, out of 363 in the second table, right? Mm -hmm. That will tell you the percentage. Compare that percentage with 88. Points. Sure. Okay. So I will. Beyond it, actually, even I had a <laughs> negative to put this particular thing away because I was not comfortable as well in this. So, but still, uh, yeah. Okay. So the my last slide is like, what I, what do I recommend based on all my uh, you know readings and things like that. Uh, since tenure and marital status play a vital role, scope to review dependent benefits and long-term service awards will be good. Uh, we are dependent benefits, I feel. So, uh, when I say dependent benefits, it's actually, uh, they can be wherein uh, if uh, my husband is working in some other organization, if there is a vacancy, I also can apply for it. So, maybe I'm just giving a broad it can be a com uh, it can become a, a, a one of the thing plus also increase the benefits in terms of the insurance either become zero or one so I'm being more favorable to the person who's also staying in the company for long years. We also have to give some kind of recognition for them. So that is where my thought came uh, across as well. And also the education policy can be improved on. Uh, uh, and also we can have a bond in place wherein please be in the system for certain years. Then you can quit. If you quit, this is what the uh, you know, consequences that you need to face. Maybe something like that also we can uh, bring about in the policy itself. And uh, again, the benefits of rewards and recognition. And one more thing is job rotation within the department. Uh, it can also increase the tenuity because uh, being in one particular department for a longer time can also uh, you know, monotonous the work. So 
the education and the job rotation can also get interlinked and they can move across the departments. This is what my uh, recommendation was. The scope for further study was involuntary attrition where we find a lot of considering considering the recent market, I feel that you know layoffs can also become one of the um, a study for us, wherein based on the previous history records of different companies, we can also predict like which company is going to uh, you know become a victim of it. So that was my thought uh, of it after doing all these things. So this is what my presentation was all about. Thank you. <laughs> No ways. <laughs>